have to start and end with coordinates. So in these models, I have coordinates um, already applied with points on them. So I'll, I'll start on this coordinate. And then I will, I have this, so if you haven't noticed here, uh, what's called the line shape, three length flex. Um, so from here to here, it's actually straight. Um, so we have to change that to a straight section. So we'll go to environment, and we'll go to straight, two point support, I'll click on this guy. So now we routed that, and then we'll go, we have to, we have to go back and change it to three length. I always start with three length, um, just makes it easier. And then we'll go to this point here, change it, go to environment, straight, point support, click there. Environment, three length, point support, click there. So obviously you can tell it's a little repetitive, right? So if you're in Creo 5 or 6, you can set up some shortcuts, uh, but I'm not, we're not that far yet. It's only Creo 3. So um, I set up a map key in here. So we have S is straight. So that changes my shape down here to straight. So now I can just do point support, click my next one. S, point support. S, point support. I'll go to my fitting over here. Yes. And just to show you guys, it's it's not. I mean, it it looks weird right here, right? Um, it's not how it should be, but it's intelligent enough to know when you click the next point um, that it will follow that tangent tangency and put that tangency in there. Okay. So that that's that's one hole routed in. Um, so now it's a good let's just go back here to our assembly and take a look at it. So we routed this guy, went through this these two clamps here, and came up this clamp, and then circled back down. There. So it, it doesn't look too bad. Um, you might want to do some some changes to this design a little bit, um, but for now, what we'll do is let's just actually so if I click route pipe, click on that pipe again from my assembly. There's a little dialog here. Um, click the confirm button. So now I've activated it. Let's just do a check rule on it once. And there's no violations here. That's that's great. Um, so now um, let's just uh, let's just do. I want to show you guys um, a save as here. So let's do. Let's take this guy and let's just do an open on him. And we'll do a file save as copy. Grab this name. Okay, so here's my skeleton. Generally, I'll always do a save copy with that, but in this case, I'm just going to leave it. Um, and there's no holes in here. Um, we'll get. We'll, I'll show you that guy that a little bit later here. Um, but that always will save as a copy. Um, it's it's a routing, so it, it's it's uh, it's not the same for um, each of your assemblies. So it's always going to try to copy. Okay. So now let's 
let's just take and move, let's just move this fitting. And we'll edit these references here. Just move them over here. And then uh, change this reference here. As you can see, it, it updates simultaneously. There's no regen. Um, so if you're doing live motion assembly, um, it's very useful because um, it actually will simultaneously update as you do like a video or something like that. Okay, so this guy, I'll just put it on the bottom. edit is these clamps in between. And what I'm actually going to do is, since I did the save as, I'll come in here, I'll assemble it. And, okay, so what I want to update So my first two are always a fitting, and my last two are always a fitting. So everything in between I, is what I want to update. Now since, in this case, um, I have the same amount of points for each each hose, it's, it's, it's a, very easy to, to update. All I have to do is click on all these, and I can do a, a chain link edit references. And this is where, this is where the can stick options, making sure that you're only reading the skeleton in this assembly is useful um, because you can click the wrong reference in another assembly if, if, uh, if you don't choose uh, wisely. So we want to move this down here and, um, oops, I clicked on both there. See how that, this guy highlights? I'm going to move that one down here. And then I'll click on this guy here, and move that one to there. I just want to preview it. It updates right away. And then I just want to go here, here. You don't always have to click on these. It, it'll automatically go to that next one down the list. So there we go. I, and then I, here again, I can preview what it looks like. Okay. And that that looks pretty good. Um, so what I'm gonna what I wanna do quick is just check the rules on this. So let's do a route pipe and we'll click on this pipeline. And I'll do pipe check rule nothing wrong there. Um, let's check this other one. Let's, um, let's do route pipe. Click on this one. Oops. Route pipe. And then check rule on that. Okay, so here we got some violations. So if I click on this one, I don't know if you guys can see, it's, it's a little fuzzy up there, um, but it's in this area. So it's like a snapshot in time. Once you move and you get closer, it'll go away. But if you click on it again, it'll show up. And I'm just going to go closer because it's hard to see. So there it is. <laughs> um, so this guy is at uh, its radius, its measuring is 92, whereas the required is 120. So um, this is user judgment at this point. Um, do we all, you always want to try to get to the required point. Um, but let's take a look at the 69 because that one is that one's quite a bit off. So where's that one? So that one's right here. 
and we might see some kinking over time when this is used for thousands of hours or something like that, um, or who knows. So what we want to do here is there's actually quite a bit of length in this part. Um, so if I come and I look at this, if I, actually if I double click on it, you can see that there is a, well, you guys might, well, there's a parameter here. So what actually the user did here is he fixed this length. So he fixed it at 420. Um, so let's just double click on this. And just for just for grins, I'll, I'll just type in one. It's not going to let me, right? And if you look closely here, it comes up in, in the um, bottom of the screen in your log, it gives you a range. Um, so this is basically like at that min band radius, here's what you should be at, 367. And then my max segment length, at this point, I, we didn't have any specifications to say, to say, oh, well, we should support it every 500 millimeters. But if that's the case, it would show up here, say, 500 millimeters. Okay, so here we'll click, we'll put in, let's just put in, uh, I don't know, um, 410, 3Gen. We'll do that. And actually it shows up right away. There's a violation in your screen down here. Um, but if we go into this check rule again, it shows up. And right now we're at the value of 100, so we're a little bit closer. So we have to go a little bit less even. Let's go to 380. Okay, so I didn't see anything pop up down here. That's, that's a good thing. To my check rule, so I still got one violation here. But that's that's in a different spot. It's actually way over here. Right here. Again, it's kind of hard to see on the screen, but there you go. It's right there. So when you look at this, the first thing that I think of is we need some more length in this section here. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a fix. Right now, it's just a free length, but we're going to fix this length uh, to give it a little bit more. So we'll go to modify. Select shape, we'll click on this section, and we get this little GUI here. Uh, so we have a free length, a fixed length, uh, we want a fixed length, and that's that length, that's the length that it's at right now. Um, so let's just update this, let's add, let's add 10 millimeters, and maybe just make that a round number, in case you want to like put that in work instructions or something. And then we'll do the pipe check rule, and we got nothing here. So that's that's what we're trying to get to. And so this is a parameter in your model. So um, if you would, if you guys uh, are, I don't know if anybody in here has like NPM link or uses Windchill um, with Creo View and all that stuff, uh, but you could publish that as a attribute um, for, or, or just a control characteristic will be the thing. And basically the line on the production line could make sure that from here to here that we're at 600 millimeters. So that's something that is, it's not that hard to do with the software. Um, it takes a little bit of practice and understanding of how to use this, but it, it's something that it benefits downstream like right away. Um, I guess at this point maybe have any questions or anything we want to go through quick? Or? Um, how would you handle the instance where you have the same length of the other than multiple pieces of multiple say you want to use the same whole length 
Yeah. Sure. So in that case, um, it's kind of like a um, for for us at at uh, Power Systems. What we'll do is we'll we'll have like say a part number, and we'll do a part number underscore routing one, and then you do routing two. Um, so that's how we we establish it. Um, I'm sure there's other ways. Um, that's a good, that's a, definitely good. Okay. Sure, yeah. Um, no, that's definitely a, a good way to think about it. Um, and with, with piping here, it, it actually worked out pretty nice um, because this always updates with your pipe. Um, so, yeah, good, good thought there. Um, for electrical wiring as well? Or? Um, no, actually, for electrical wiring, what we'll, what we'll use is uh, the cable. The cable. And that, you can use that in conjunction with this. So you have like a um, conduit. So this would be like a conduit, maybe. So you can route, you can use, uh, in cabling, you can route a pipe through those pipes. Um, so there's, there's um, you could probably use this for cabling if you want to, um, but I would probably recommend taking it. If, if you get, if you have creo piping, you should have creo cabling. I think they're the extensions are they, they're both of them. Um, I don't know if anybody knows more. They can probably say something there, but um, yeah, I would. You got this. I would take a look at cabling. <laughs> Uh, I guess what do you mean by that? Like, okay. Um, I guess our culture is really always trying to find something new and better. Um, so anytime we do have something new, we want to try to document it. So we, I guess I, we have documentation um, in our, uh, internally um, on how to best use it for our case. Um, and that's stored somewhere, honestly. Somebody can always reference it. Um, but... <laughs> Yeah, they should they should be able to do that. Yeah. And um, I'll tell you what, uh, I guess I, I guess I could just show you. Um, do you use datum curve or a style curve for anything like this? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, using the style curve, it's very user dependent. So I guess let me just let me just uh, do it quick here. I'll show you guys. Um, so I guess I'll just. Exactly. So that's what I'm going to show here. So. Um, We'll go and create a style curve in here. No naming convention here, I'm just throwing right in. So, um, what we'll do here is I'm just going to actually go in here and do style curve right away. Um, so make a curve, and I'm going to grab that point. Then I'm going to take this guy, and I, I kind of understand this, how to use this, so it's, it's a little easier for me to, to grasp. But what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm using snapping features.